Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I am coming to you with something I might call a weekend reads. It's also a little bit of a mid-month wrap-up. I didn't want to call it a mid-month wrap-up because you got my May wrap-up on Monday and you should be getting this video tomorrow, which is Friday. And I kind of didn't want to say that I gave you two wrap-ups in a week. Uh, we're only 10 days into the month of June and so we're only 10 days into Ancient Sathon, but I've already gotten quite a bit of reading done, and I'm really shocked about that because this has been an incredibly stressful week for me, uh, and I feel like I haven't read very much, so I'm quite shocked to look at my Goodreads, to look at my reading journal, and see just how many books I actually have finished thus far in the month. Uh, so I thought that I could talk about some of them here. I've had a lot of hits this month so far. Uh, and then I thought I could talk about what I'm currently reading and what is next up for me uh, in terms of my TBR this month. So I immediately kicked off June with Ancients a Thon, which is the readathon that I am running with Tori from Hufflepuff Discovery. I will link to our announcement videos down below. It's running throughout the month of June. And our goal with this is to read classics written before 1700. And so I had decided to kind of focus on shorter books for this readathon because I often find myself choosing to tackle larger books during readathons, and that is never really all that successful for me uh, because I do tend to get burnt out about halfway through the month if I try to focus on a larger book like that. So this time around with this readathon, I really wanted to focus on shorter works. The main one that I want to talk about is the first book that I read for the readathon, uh, and it's actually my favorite so far, and that is Tartuffe by Moliere. This is my first Moliere. It will not be my last. In fact, I'm kind of contemplating just reading this entire collection straight through because I had such a great time with Tartuffe, uh, which is a play. So one of our prompts for the readathon is to read a play. And I have never been truly a big fan of comedy uh, because I do think it doesn't read well. I think comedy is something that you have to see. And this proved me wrong. I found this to be an utter delight. And I chose Tartuffe because I thought it was going to be about a mushroom. That sounds kind of silly, but Tartuffo in Italian means um, truffle. And so I assumed this whole entire play was going to be about maybe hunting for truffles. It was just going to be about mushrooms in general. Uh, but apparently Tartuffo or Tartuffe was also an insult at the time. It did mean truffle, but it was also an insult. And so this is essentially a case of a guy who is a bit of a charlatan uh, coming into a family and essentially manipulating that family. He basically wants their money. Uh, and so it's just really funny how some of the family members are on to him and how some of them just really, really love him. It kind of gave me a bit of a Rasputin vibe, actually, uh, because Tartuffe was portrayed as somebody who is really devout uh, and is always talked about by those who really like him as somebody who is very saintly, but everybody who doesn't like him thinks his faith is completely fake uh, and it's done up for shamanship. But what really sold me on this is that it's told in rhyming couplets. It's just so fun. I think I'll try and find you a good portion of it because uh, it's just a delight to hear. This is from the first few lines of the play. I tell you yet again, I'm going to be frank. The whole world is outraged. They know they view to think. You'll try to patch things up if you want my advice. Before you let this run its course, you must think twice. Do sacrifice your anger to the Holy One and try to reconcile the father with his son. It was an absolute delight to read and it was an absolute delight to read aloud. I decided to read it aloud every time I picked it up and that was easily the best choice. It did mean some of the characters blurred together a little bit for me, uh, but it meant that I got so much more enjoyment out of it. I really, really loved this and I found it absolutely delightful. Apparently this was first put on for Louis XIV at Versailles and he didn't like it. Something about it really offended him, and so Tartuffe was actually banned and it wasn't put on for a long time. Uh, so I feel like I need to really look into that. I'm not quite sure what about it really would have offended him, uh, but I just found it to be really, really fun, and I'm looking forward to diving into the rest of the plays in this edition. 
Another work that I have read for Ancient Tathon is The Secret History by Procopius. This is really short. And I had my problems with this. It is a really great scandalous look at Byzantine court during the reign of the Emperor Justinian and the Empress Theodora. In fact, it's really scathing, but I don't think you can read this without having any prior knowledge of the historical period. For a book this short, there should have been so many more notes in it, uh, because frequently Procopius will say, I've already discussed this before in another book I wrote. Now, I don't know if Penguin plans on publishing that or if they do publish an edition of his other works. And so they're kind of assuming you would have read that before you read this, but that's absolutely not the case. I would not say I am an expert on this time period at all, but I also would not say that I am a beginner to it. And yet I found parts of this book needed more explanation. And I thought if you were a casual reader and you weren't really familiar with the reign of Justinian, would you have enjoyed this? Would you have really understood what was going on? Contextually, would you even have known very much about Justinian prior? It's also very hard to discuss because we don't know whether or not we should take this work seriously. It's not known whether Procopius wrote this as satire. It's not known whether he kind of wrote this in secret, but this is actually how he felt about how things were going on because other works that he wrote were extremely positive uh, and had very favorable portraits of Theodora and Justinian. But I do think you come away from this thinking, how can any of this be real? Certainly parts of it strain credulity to me. Uh, and so I think it would have been really interesting to have some more notes, to have a scholar of the field. What I actually really dream of is that we had had John Julius Norwich do this, who is one of my favorite historians of all time. He has sadly passed on now, but I think his notes for this would have been incredible, where you contextualize the historical events that he was talking about and also contextualized his portraits of the historical figures because Theodora and Justinian were not the only ones scathed in this. Um, Belisarius was, and his wife Belisarius is a famous general from the period and probably uh, maybe the last true classical general, truly somebody that we can say was a classical Roman soldier. He's probably the last of that generation. Uh, and so Belisarius is often afforded a lot of respect in other sources and by historians, but in this book he's portrayed as a bit of a fool. So throughout the process of reading this, I frequently found myself wishing I was reading a modern nonfiction beside it to contextualize the things he was saying, because nothing here told you he might be sensationalizing this. You were just allowed to kind of think, wow, all of this is true, or oh wow, none of this is true. And I think had you known absolutely nothing about this time period, you would have been lost. Uh, so in general, my issue is not necessarily with the work, it is with the edition. I think that more scholarly work could have been done on this. The work itself is very short, but it is exactly what I wanted. It was very scandalous, it was very funny, uh, and it was really, really shocking in parts. You really could not believe some of it was happening. Uh, and that was in the case of things that I knew for a fact did happen, not just what I think he kind of made up to make Justinian and Theodora seem worse. So this was a solid three stars for me. I am looking forward to the rest of Ancient Thon, but I'm not quite sure what I will pick up next. Uh, I am trying to read through St. Catherine of Siena's letters. I'm trying to read a couple of those a day. It has not worked out for me thus far because her letters are actually very long and they are actually very thought provoking. Uh, so I do feel like I need to spend time with them when I read them. I haven't started The Pilgrim's Progress, which is our group read for the month. Uh, so I'm behind on that one. Uh, and I'm also behind on Dante, so I need to get caught up on that this weekend. But otherwise, I think I'm caught up on everything that I have to do. Uh, things that I'm buddy reading with people because Svea and I finished our read of the Grishaverse this week. I will save my thoughts on that for my monthly wrap up because... We had a really great time. I don't know that some of the books were as great as we remember them being, but uh, our experience with it was really, really wonderful. So I will link to Svea's channel down below. That does make me think that I am technically still currently reading War and Peace. Uh, I feel like were I not buddy reading War and Peace with people, 
I would have DNF'd it, and in fact, I still might, uh, because I feel like at this point, I'm reading it to say I read it, and I'm getting nothing out of it. Because in truth, I don't like it. I don't like the way he writes. Uh, so it's very difficult for me to actually pick up War and Peace. It's difficult for me to kind of justify to myself reading it when I know there are other books I could read that I would really enjoy better. I have read three Tolstoys now, or attempted three Tolstoys now, in three different translations. To me, I can't call it a translation issue. I can't call it a story issue. I just think I don't like the way Tolstoy writes. Uh, and so that's fine by me, but I feel like such a fraud if I give up on War and Peace. Uh, but I'm reading War and Peace with Christina from Knitting Books, etc. and Christy Lewis from Dostoyevsky in Space, and I will link to their channels down below. They have both blown past me because I think they do really enjoy it, uh, but I feel like I'm letting them down because I'm not even halfway through it, and I have no desire to get further. Uh, so that's just a really sad thing that I think I'm gonna have to admit defeat on. I did finish a fantasy read this week though, and that was For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. This was a bit of a disappointment to me. I thought for sure this book would get a high four stars because I thought I would just like the vibes uh, because it is a Red Riding Hood retelling, essentially, where the wolf is a man. I'm a bit of a sucker for that. Uh, and every time I see that, if it's a Red Riding Hood retelling and the wolf is a man, I'm kind of into it, and I really thought I would like this because there is a bit of a creepy forest in it, a sentient forest. Uh, so I really love that. I love a forest setting, but none of the characters felt fully realized to me. Uh, so it was just like being kept at arm's length from everything happening or from caring about anything happening because I didn't feel like I cared anything about the characters, and I really didn't feel like I knew any of the characters, uh, which is a weird thing to say because the book was over 400 pages. So by that point, you would think I would have bonded with somebody. But uh, I found the love interest in particular to be lackluster. This was a highly anticipated release for me, and it wasn't bad. It just wasn't as great as I think that it could have been. And I think there was quite a bit of it that had been done before and done better. Uh, so I definitely could see parallels between this and other works of adult, new adult, young adult fantasy. And I thought individually those elements had been done better elsewhere. Uh, so I did just think this fell a little bit flat for me. It was still really enjoyable. Uh, but now I am on the hunt for a new fantasy book for the second half of the month. And thinking about that, I think the fantasy book that I will pick up next is Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian, uh, because this was my book of the month pick this month. And it is an Arthurian legend retelling uh, about the Lady of Shalot, which I am now realizing that we in North Carolina, we say Shalote because there is a town called Shalote uh, in North Carolina, but I often hear other people say Shallot, and I just don't think that that's what it is. I can't bring myself to say the Lady of Shallot or the Lady of Shalot. Uh, that just seems really weird to me. But here in North Carolina, we often don't pronounce cities the way that they are spelled. Uh, so maybe I am saying that wrong. Maybe it is Shalot. Maybe it is shallot. Shallot just sounds like a small onion. I just don't think that that's correct. Uh, but I really am fascinated by the story of the Lady of Shalot. And so I think it's probably going to be pretty interesting to read a book from her perspective. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I'm very hard on Arthurian legend retellings. And I don't know how I'm going to feel about this one. I feel like I took a bit of a chance here, but it is really big. It's by an author that I've read before and I really enjoyed her work. Uh, she wrote a YA series of, a couple of years ago that I thought was really, really well done and was very tropey, which I think people don't like nowadays, but I do. So I feel confident in her handling of the tropes and her kind of addressing some of the more iconic aspects of the Arthurian legend. Uh, so I am really, really excited about this. And a couple of y'all asked me about my favorite Arthurian legend retellings and doing a couple of Arthurian themed videos. And I think I probably will because I feel like I'm a bit in that mood now. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to this one. Hopefully I really enjoy it. 
I kind of went out of order there. I started talking about things that were next up for me, things on my TBR, uh, before telling you the book that I am currently reading, which I am loving. I am obsessed with this. Uh, and that is The Idiot by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I absolutely love this. Uh, and I think I'm really glad I decided to start my journey with Dostoevsky here. So The Idiot is essentially about a very kind and caring character named Prince Mishkin, who doesn't really have the same boundaries as everybody else. He's very forthcoming with information. He doesn't know a stranger. He doesn't really assume that you might have ulterior motives when you meet him. And he's very naive in a way that leads people to believe that he is an idiot, but he's actually just a really good person. Uh, and so I really, really love him. I find him so refreshing for classic literature. And so I'm just so excited to continue my journey with Prince Mishkin throughout this book. I also really love the guy that I can sense is going to become a villain in this story. I won't tell you his name because maybe, maybe it's a spoiler, but I really like him as well. This will be the third Russian thing that I've read in as many weeks that I have loved. I'm realizing now I didn't mention Ward number six uh, by Anton Chekhov. I actually listened to an audiobook version of that. I listened to an audiobook version of a lot of Anton Chekhov's short stories, and I'm thinking about doing a video wrap up on those, so maybe I will save my thoughts for those there. But after really struggling with Tolstoy this year, I mean really struggling with Tolstoy, I kind of wondered if Russian literature as a whole just wasn't for me because Tolstoy is often talked about as the greatest of Russian novelists. And so I thought, if I don't like Tolstoy, if I don't like the greatest, will I like anybody less than that, so-called less than that? Uh, and evidently, I like them more than I like Tolstoy. I loved Pushkin, I've loved Anton Chekhov, and now I can say for sure I love Fyodor Dostoevsky. This, I have the sense I'm gonna give five stars. I hope I'm not giving it too much early praise, but this has been a really, really enjoyable, delightful book. Hopefully I do continue to love this and hopefully I do give it that five stars. So I will tell you how I felt about this at the end of the month. But also upcoming for me in terms of my TBR this month, I do have all the other things that are on my Ancient Sathon TBR. Uh, so I have Dante, that's my main thing, and The Pilgrim's Progress. But I also have a couple of things on my list. I have a buddy read, oh, which I am reading with Orion from Book Zealots. I will link to their channel down below. We are reading The Foresight Saga. The goal is, since The Foresight Saga is actually a trilogy, to read one book a month. Uh, so ideally we would be done with this at the end of August, but I don't know how that's gonna go. It is really, really big, but so far I am really enjoying it. I am only a few pages in and I really like the way he writes. It feels very cheeky and it feels in so many ways like Titanic. I know it's because it was written at a similar time, but I feel like the Edwardian vibes in this are immaculate. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to this. I think this would have lingered on my shelf for years had Orion not said she also had a copy of this. So I'm glad we're both going to get to this and I hope that we both enjoy it. It's a really long series to read if you're not enjoying it. But so far, having just read the first couple of pages, I am really enjoying the writing style. Last but not least on what's coming up for me in the second half of the month is Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. I hope I can get to this. This is the pick for the Dickens versus Tolstoy readathon this month. Uh, and so for the last couple of months, everybody was reading War and Peace. I'm way behind on that. But Oliver Twist is the pick for June. It's really small. I feel like I should be able to do it. But it is Dickens, and I really like to take my time with Dickens, and I would like to annotate this edition. I annotated the Pickwick Papers when the Dickens vs. Tolstoy Book Club read that earlier in the year, and that was just such a wonderful experience. And I know, though, a lot of people are torn on Oliver Twist. Some people really like Oliver Twist. For a lot of people, it falls very flat because evidently the adaptations are very different to what the novel actually is. This is technically at the bottom of my TBR list, but I would really like to get to it this month. So that is my reading update. I will call it a weekend reads because I didn't cover everything. So we'll have a lot to talk about at the end of the month. I would love to know how your reading month is going thus far, but that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.